Hello everyone, welcome to the channel, my name is Georgia and today I'm going to be watching episode 4 of Moonlight Chicken. Last episode we got some backstory into Jim's past relationship. It didn't quite have an ending so I do hope we get a little bit more flashbacks with that relationship. I can't remember if they said the guy's name, if they did I don't remember it. Turns out that the guy that Jim used to be with had this dream of starting up the Moonlight Chicken Diner and he was basically like the brains behind it all and he was the one that really pushed Jim to have the guts to make it happen and in the end it turned out this guy was cheating on Jim and Jim found out when he snooped through his phone. <sighs> It would have been quite satisfying to see a scene of Jim breaking up with him, I feel. But I guess that was all we needed to understand why Jim is the way he is now. And it is interesting that he is continuing this guy's dream and he can't let the diner go. He said that he loves his diner now because this whole stuff with the Marina Food Court has come into play as well and he's at risk of losing it and he's admitted he does love his diner and he doesn't want to lose it and while this diner has given him so much like it's really made him a big part of this community and he has met so many people because of it I do wonder if it does have some significance because of the fact it was with this ex and whether it's like letting go of the diner would mean letting go of him as well either way I don't want Jim to lose his diner because it is his livelihood and I don't know what else he would be doing if he didn't have this. But I am a bit worried that it's going to be like a metaphor of he lets the diner go and he lets his ex go and then moves forward with Wern because I'm like, what is Jim without Moonlight Chicken? <laughs> Wern told Jim that he is running the Marina Food Court project which is putting his diner at risk. Jim wasn't very happy about it at first understandably but he forgave him by the end and one was acting like the perfect little peacemaker between Jim and Li Ming because they had an argument about what Li Ming wants to do once he finishes school and he finally told him he wants to travel abroad but Jim didn't have the best reaction. Wen had a conversation with both of them and I think really made them see the other's point of view. I'm so hoping that Jim and Li Ming have a better conversation this episode because I love them both separately but their scenes together break my heart because they never have a nice conversation it's always shouting or having a go at each other in some regard so I just want to see them sit down and have a nice conversation about it so I'm really hoping that when is going to make that possible for me <laughs> it was the Loi Pratong festival Guy for invited Jim along but Jim didn't go he did his own little thing with Wen at a swimming pool kind of thing but in the end I do think everyone did the tradition with who they were supposed to like as in the person they're most connected to because Jim did it with Wern, Li Ming did it with Hart, Gaifa did it with his mother and at this point in time they are that is who each of them are closest to so it kind of did work out in the end but oh, I'm so sorry Gaifa, Jim let you down. Li Ming ended up staying at Hart's place that night and I oh if he didn't text Jim that he was staying somewhere else that night I'm realizing now when he gets home it's gonna be another argument. <laughs> but on better news, guess who showed up at the end? Ah! I'm so excited for this episode purely because of him. One's boyfriend was laying in the bed and we finally got our first glimpse of him and I cannot wait to see an interaction with one and Alan this episode because it will be the first insight into their relationship and I'm so excited. He's not waking up alone today. <laughs> hey. There's no shame in it when he was doing it as well. Leeming is like fluent now because that can't be a phrase that he taught him to say pretending to sleep what rogue words are those to teach i want to know like the time period here Man, sharp. his eyes da hong gu <laughs> 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 The fact that his parents haven't caught them 
because they haven't checked on their son is truly heartbreaking. Oh my god! From that hand touch over the liquor bottle last night where they both went all shy and awkward to this. We love to see it. Um, His face! He is so disgusted with him! He hates him! Why is he still with him? What is so different? His whole demeanor has changed. Uh, if you're not going, I think you should be the one to tell her. ไม่ไปอ่ะก็คงไม่ได้ไม่ใช่หรอกไม่ชอบกูอึดอัด What? <laughs> They're not Why? They're not together anymore. They still live together and share a bed. Explanation, please. What? Oh my god. Well, at least he's not cheating. Yes. <laughs> But no, why, why, why? Maybe Wen struggles with money more than I thought. Can he not afford to get his own place so he still has to live with him? They don't have a sofa that he can sleep on at least? Like, well that is a plot twist I did not see coming. This has changed everything. <laughs> Seems like he still wants to be with him though. Like he's holding out hope that they can get things back on track. <laughs> เอ๊ะเชียร์มึงจริงจังวะเนี่ยพอมาเริ่มพิเศษต้องไปจะเป็นความรักได้เหรอวะแม่งเปิดมาก็พีคเลเวลสิบแล้วอ่ะแม่ง
interrupting him with what he's about to say. กูพยายามนะเว้ยพยายามทําให้ชีวิตเบื้องเนี้ยมันดีขึ้นอยู่นี่ไงดีเท่าไหร่กูก็ให้มึงหมดผมไม่เอาก็ได้ลุงจะต
looking at the photo but all he wanted to see was him leaving he truly loves him and just wants the best for him also can we talk about how jim let guyfer down with the like tong festival and guyfer ended up with his mother and now guyfer's bist on jim's birthday party to stay with his mother like i really like that they've got a healthy happy mother-son dynamic in this because i have to say that is a soft spot of mine <laughs> ผมอาจจะมองว่ามันเด็กแปลงจริงนั่นแหละจะมีเงี้ยเนี่ยลุงเราก็จะมองว่าเขาเด็กเกินไปแต่ตอนที่เราคาดหวังให้เขาทําอ
I was thinking this person is calling him very softly. I can't work out who it is, but it's Guy Fawkes. I'm going to send him to the bank first. And when I'm done, I'm going to pay back. Okay? Okay. Let's wait. Can you come too? Okay. Guy Fawkes hasn't seen him for days, so he's taking the opportunity. Hello, sir. Oh no! Oh no! Worst coincidence ever! เอ่อบ้านหรือร้านเป็นชื่อของคุณหรือเปล่าคะเช่าทั้งคู่เลยครับที่ร้านค้าเช่นทางนี้หน่อยค่ะเออไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่
จะทําให้เขารู้สึกว่ายังมีใครอีกคนนึงอยู่ด้วยก็ให้คิดซะว่าเขาเป็นคนหูดีคนหนึ่ง The way Li Ming thinks he's doing things wrong or does doesn't know what he's doing, but he has shown heart more love and care than anyone else throughout his time being deaf. He doesn't realize how great he is. Also, am I tripping, or is that Ford? <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted. But when I think I recognize someone, I just freeze. Is that Ford? I recognize the hair. <laughs> oh my God! เราฟังด้วยความรู้สึกด้วยจังหวะของการสั่นสะเทือน The speaker. อย่างนี้เขาจะมีความสุขเหรอคุณพ่อสำหรับบางคนความสุขคือการมีอนาคตให้ฝันถึง Oh my God we gotta get to see everyone happy for once แต่บางคนอาจจะมีความสุขง่ายๆแค่ได้ใช้เวลาที่มีค่ากับคนที่รักความสุขอาจจะหมายถึงการได้รับรู้ว่ามีใครสักคนที่เขาเข้าใจและพร้อมจะอยู่เคียงข้างเราได้หัวเราะกับเรื่องง่ายๆโดยที่เราไม่ต้องพยายาม No one does a good emotional montage like p i o f Like, this takes me back to the Bad Buddy episode 11 montage, but on a grander scale. We all know by now, my favorite scene in Bad Buddy is that scene at the end of episode 11 when Ban sings Pat R song and it shows all their moments. But then when it goes to the continuation of the episode 6 conversation when they were talking about what their lives would be like if their families weren't enemies and they went into that what if montage. <sighs> Pioff just knows how to get the emotions out, and this scene is everything to me now. Jim is happy, <gasps> and he's dressed up like Santa. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. 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 I should have known we weren't gonna get it bad to him being happy. He's coming and ruined the moment. Okay, okay. Oh my god, and Jim. Jim, you'll recognize him too. You're already over though, aren't you? Oh, Jim's gonna see this as cheating as well, and if there's anything he won't stand for, it's cheating. คุณไม่ต้องเสื่อมหรอวะคุณไม่ต้องเสื่อมหรอวะได้กับมันแล้วใช่ไหมถ้าเขาไม่กล้าตอบนะงั้นมึงก็ตอบมาดิมึงได้
Have they been broken up since February? That's like nearly a year of living together broken up, if that is right. Even if you still love someone, if they don't return that love, you deserve to go and find someone else. I am ending the show here. Sorry guys, I don't think I can continue if next episode Hart has an accident and they'll find out that he's been sneaking him out. No, I can't watch that. This episode was 100% my favourite so far. Even just that final scene sold it for me. Like, wow. Wow, wow, wow. From the minute they stepped inside, that death mass it all changed absolute poetic cinema so so beautiful every good descriptive word under the sun to describe that scene showing both sides of life there are happy moments and there is also despair hidden behind it and i actually said this in a reaction the other day as much as there is a fine line between love and hate there is a fine line between hope and despair and that scene highlighted that so well there are moments where you have happy times with people and you can experience these truly beautiful life-changing moments but within an instant as soon as you're on your own back at home the worry creeps back in because everyone has their own problems everyone has their own issues they're dealing with Guyper's mother even. I don't know what she was holding because it wasn't translated so I'm gonna need some clarity on that one but she has more beneath the surface as well and I'm so glad that they showed that she's also got some kind of issue and kind of given her a storyline. Obviously this show is predominantly male so it is nice when the shows give female characters more depth as well and I really loved that scene with her and Guyper. She's not treating him any differently than if he were a heterosexual man. She just wants to see him fall in love with whoever he is in love with and she wants to see her son happy with someone and I think that's what everyone's parents want. Everyone just wants their children to be happy and tying back in again to Jim and Lee Ming, that's all Jim wants and I have said my piece on them many a time and to be honest their scenes feel like a whole world away now after that final scene that's all I'm thinking of but he loves and cares for him and wants the best for him and I hope they can work things out. The communication game needs to step up from both of them but at the moment I am just relishing in the heart of Li Ming moments because <laughs> Li Ming must be such a joy in Hart's life at this point in time. His first time out of the house this episode, his first time meeting deaf people and I've also just deeped this. How did Hart learn sign language? If his parents don't know any, they, cl they clearly didn't teach him. So did he have to self-teach himself all on the internet? Or did he have a tutor? Did they at least pay for a tutor to come in and teach him sign language? My guess is probably not. And it would be even more tragic if he has learned this sign language of his own accord because his parents didn't give him the opportunity to because they don't plan on letting him out of the house ever. They just thought he's deaf now. Shut him in the house. It's his problem now. He needs to deal with it. If they didn't hire a tutor to teach him sign language, I am actually throwing hands because that means they've truly had no plan for their son to like continue any kind of life after losing his hearing. If he has just learned this all by himself, this new way to communicate while having no one to share it with at that point in time, I can't deal. <laughs> And his portion in that sad montage, looking at the work and travel thing, but also looking at the little snowmen figurines they had from this evening, I think it's hitting him that Li Ming wants to leave the country. And if Li Ming does get that opportunity, how will be left behind? <laughs> and Li Ming is like the source of all of his happiness now. And if he loses him, it's going to be two steps forward, three steps back, isn't it? He's going to be even worse off than the show started because he would have had something good and then lost it. But I just have to have faith that Piof isn't going to do that to me. To us. And Alan. I am so happy we got to meet him. And I don't dislike him. I, I still need more explanations about what happened between him and Wern. Because it seems like he really did something that triggered the downfall of their relationship. Like he made some kind of decision that's pissed went off he deserves better than to be treated like this and I, i'm not saying when is in the wrong at all because i don't think they should still be living together if he's tried to break up with him before i don't know when's financial situation i don't know enough about him to know why he's still living with him but him finding a condo is the right move and he needs to move out asap it's not fair on either of them 
one loves someone else and it's not fair on Jim to be dragged into this when he knew absolutely nothing about it and also Jim has been pushing one away but it's one squirming himself in so Alan blaming Jim I know he has zero context it's not fair for Jim to be blamed at all because this man has tried his hardest to get rid of one. And it's best for everyone if they just don't live each other anymore. The fact that they still share a bed is boggling. I need, I'm gonna need to have a look out. They must have a couch in there that one can sleep on. I don't know why they're still sharing a bed. I don't know why he still lives with him. As that poster thing said 2022, Feb February 2022, in the preview, perhaps next episode is gonna be a little bit of a flashback up into their relationship, question mark. I really like all of them, I really like everyone. It's so difficult. If you were to ask me who my favorite character is in this show at this point in time, absolutely nowhere I could decide between, between five. Alan isn't quite there yet because he's only had one up, but I do really like him and I do really feel for him. He's clinging onto this relationship that has absolutely no hope but he still has that little bit of hope because Wen stayed. Because Wen is still living with him and sharing his bed. But Wen, good on him, has made his feelings very clear that Alan should really be getting the message by now. But a bit like Jim, he's holding on to something that isn't there, but in a different way. He has hope for it to come back to life. But Jim is on the other end of the spectrum where he's holding on to his past relationship. But he thinks that anything else is going to bring him dread and despair. So Jim and Alan have taken this scenario very differently in their respective relationships and neither of them is healthy. <laughs> That's it for today guys, thank you for watching my reaction to episode 4 of Moonlight Chicken. If you want to watch my uncut reactions to Moonlight Chicken, the link to the Patreon page will be in the description below. Leave a like if you enjoyed and I'll see you next time for episode 5. Bye! <laughs>